Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, I am very proud to present our first preliminary winter forecast for the winter of 2021 to 2022. Now before I get into things, I would ask that you do like the video, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather related content. Also for today's comment of the day, I want to know, how do you think this upcoming winter is going to go in your opinion? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now let's get straight into this video. First things first, we are looking at the precipitation winter forecast, and we need to talk about the southwest real quick, because I do expect yet another dry winter down here for the southwestern United States. Unfortunately, over the past 10 years or so, this has been the trend, mostly drier than normal winters for this southwestern corner, and it's obviously been a problem because of the numerous amounts of droughts and other major impacts that we've seen because of these drier conditions consistently for this region. We also have a second layer of below average precipitation expected down there for the southwestern United States. This is just an area where we're even more confident in that below average precipitation occurring. This is for a lot of California, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, and a little bit of Texas as well. Now, before we get into the above average precipitation, if you like the video, so you have to like the video, leave a comment down below with your location that you live in. I will be trying to go to as many of those and giving you a custom winter forecast. So be sure to like the video and leave that comment down below so I can give you even more detailed information. Now, we actually have two above average precipitation regions, the first of which is here in the northwestern United States. We do expect a La Nada or potentially a little bit of an El Nino, but I, I do expect mostly a La Nada or a neutral Enso this year, which usually brings above average precipitation to the northwest, just like a La Nina. And also it does encourage that below average precipitation for the southwest. So all of this is very congruent with what a, a, a La Nada would be like. Uh, so we have above average precipitation expected for the northwest, even in through the northern Rockies as well. But we do have a moderate shade of that above average precipitation. And again, this is just an area where we're a little bit more confident in that above average precipitation. This is for Oregon and Washington, where I do expect the above average precipitation. Now let's check out that second area where I expect above average precipitation. And that's for the eastern seaboard and the Gulf states as well, as well as a little bit of the interior eastern United States. I do expect a nor'easter pattern to be likely this upcoming winter. That does happen oftentimes in La Nada's. You kind of get the best of both worlds for winter and uh, for snow and cold lovers, really, in general. You get the nor'easters that an El Nino would bring, but you also get the very cold temperatures that a La Nina would bring. And those two things kind of come together and they can create a very intense combination that could result in a lot of snow for the eastern United States. All right, now we do have a second shade of this as well for the Gulf states and all the way up the eastern seaboard, again, being very congruent with that nor'easter pattern I am expecting to be possible. That also includes southern sliders, by the way, for the southeast. And then we even have a third shade of that above average precipitation because I'm actually quite confident that we will have pretty far above average precipitation, especially for the Gulf states, but also for the eastern seaboard due to those southern sliders and those nor'easters that I expect to occur. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at that temperature forecast for the upcoming winter of 2021 to 2022. Now, I wanted to mention one thing real quickly. If you haven't joined our Patreon page yet, we're going to be uploading the snowfall winter forecast over there for this first preliminary winter forecast. Obviously, once we do some future updates, we will be including that snowfall forecast. But for this one, uh, we're not going to be releasing that to the general public. We're only going to be releasing that to our exclusive Patreon page member. So check that out in the pinned comment and the description down below if you are interested in seeing that snowfall forecast to see if you're going to get above average or below average snowfall this upcoming winter. Now starting out for the temperature forecast, we have the southwest expecting above average temperatures here. Uh, and this is our first shade for California, Nevada, southern Idaho, southern Oregon, even portions of Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas. We do have a second shade of that above average temperatures that I expect, uh, but this stays a little bit inland. We do have a little bit of a negative PDO, and that usually encourages some colder than normal temperatures to reach the west coast. So that's why I'm keeping those warmer than normal conditions, especially further inland a little bit, because I do think there's a chance that we see some near normal conditions there for the coast of California, uh, and especially Oregon and Washington with the above average precipitation. I do expect them to see near normal or below average temperatures. So speaking of them, here is our first shade of the 
of the below average temperatures. And as you can see for Oregon and Washington, we do expect that mostly due to the cloudiness and the raininess uh, that usually encourages some colder than normal conditions. But that also moves straight through the northern Rockies, I guess the very far northern Rockies, and then it spills down into the eastern half of the country. Uh, this is very typical with a neutral ENSO, and I do expect that to be the uh, driving force behind our pattern. I also do expect a negative NAO to be possible this winter due to the sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic. I talk about all these things in depth, by the way, uh, in our Winter Thought series. So if you're curious about that, you can check out those videos. I just uploaded one a couple of days ago. I talk a lot more about the sea surface temperatures and the driving forces behind all of these things. In these forecast videos, I mostly just show you the results, not really the causation. So if you are more curious about the causation, those videos are perfect for you. Uh, but yeah, we do expect below average temperatures in all of these light blue regions. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at the moderately below average temperatures. Might even have a third shade, you'll have to wait and see. Uh, but then we're going to get into that very exciting overall forecast, which I'm sure most of you have been waiting for. So here we go. Here is our second shade of below average temperatures here for the eastern half of the country. This is going to spill in through uh, from Canada into Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota. Montana has over the past 20 years had severely below average temperatures uh, during the wintertime. And I'm not just talking about cold temperatures. I'm talking about colder than what is even typical for them. They have had the furthest below average temperatures over the past 20 years out of like any state in the United States. And I do expect that to, for the most part, continue. We can see that areas like the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, the Ohio Valley, even portions of the Southeast and the Gulf states, and then basically most of the East Coast, I expect moderately below average temperatures. Now we do actually have a third shade of those below average temperatures, and that is going to be mostly for Montana, the upper Midwest, portions of the Ohio Valley, and the Great Lakes, where I expect the coldest conditions to move into uh, even further than what is typically normal. I feel quite confident in those regions. That's why they get the third shade of below average temperatures. So yes, I do expect most of that very cold air to stay further inland. Now let's go ahead and move on to that very exciting and highly anticipated overall forecast. And just like always, we're going to move from the western United States into the eastern half of the country. First things first, for the Pacific Northwest, stormy is what we expect, and you can tell from the precipitation forecast that that is obvious that that's what I expect for areas in Idaho, Washington, and Oregon. Now, we expect typical snow for this white area, which is usually in the hundreds of inches for most of those white regions, so they are going to get tons of snowfall regardless of what happens this upcoming winter. It doesn't really matter. They're going to see hundreds of inches for most of those regions. Down below for the four corner states, Nevada, even California, we expect uh, more warm for these regions and even more dry, especially for California, uh, Nevada, and portions of Arizona. That could even have been extended a little bit further eastward there on the very southern extent. We have warm and dry expected there for uh, New Mexico and Texas there. Up above there, we see for portions of Colorado, Kansas, ne uh, Nebraska there, even portions of Wyoming, we expect snowy conditions there east of the Rockies a little bit. I do expect some storms to move through there for sure. Polar vortex is possible this year uh, there in kind of that magenta color. Definitely with the very far below average temperatures, it really just depends what the AO does or what we call our Arctic oscillation. If that goes negative, that could encourage a very strong polar vortex to move down into the United States. Uh, but if it's in its positive phase, we can expect a much stronger polar vortex that just stays way far north over the North Pole, never reaching down into the United States. So it's going to depend on some of those shorter range oscillations that are impossible to see at this point. We do expect Arctic blasts for areas in that pink region south of the polar vortex region. And that's pretty much a sure thing. There will be Arctic blasts throughout the winter. Above average lake effect snowfall for those light blue regions around the lake, <laughs> lake effect regions or the, or the Great Lakes. We do expect above average lake effect snowfall with these very cold temperatures that will move over the warm lakes, especially earlier on in the season. Winter battle zone there in that very bright pink region for Oklahoma, Arkansas, down through the Gulf states, and even in through portions of the southeast. That is where we expect some icy precipitation. We do expect a lot of rainfall for this region, obviously, and maybe even a little bit of snowfall as well. So you will see pretty much all storm modes. There will be a lot of situations where you're struggling with a mixed event where you really just want snow, or maybe you just really want rain, but it'll be something in between. Uh, never just all one. Never just all snowfall, mostly just ice, rain, snow per storm. But there's going to be a lot of only rain rain events there as well. Very stormy here for the south, 
uh, basically the Gulf states for the most part, Texas all the way eastward through Georgia and, and Florida. This is an area where I expect very far above average precipitation as those nor'easters are developing and beginning for these regions. Uh, this is an area that could see far above average precipitation. Now, last but not least, for this red region, we expect huge nor'easters to be possible. I've mentioned why multiple times. We're going to see the very cold temperatures possibly move in from Canada into the eastern United States. And then we could see a storm mode that moves with that combined jet stream because we have two of those going on. One that comes from Canada and then one that sometimes comes from basically Mexico and the Gulf of Mexico. And in a neutral ENSO, which is what we expect, those two can come together and basically create one much larger and much stronger jet stream along the eastern seaboard. That is what creates perfect east coast blizzards, basically, that drop multiple feet of snowfall. We do expect the worst of winter, though, to be a little bit further inland because these areas will be a little bit colder. And as these storms move through, they will, they will be more likely to see all snow events and probably many more snowfall events than the eastern seaboard will see. But I do expect that the east coast has a high chance of large uh, and, and very impactful snowstorms this upcoming winter. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed our first preliminary winter forecast. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Be sure to like the video, like I said before. Here's our confidence tab. We're at a three out of six today. Uh, there is some things that I actually feel pretty confident in, but obviously there's many things that are bigger question marks, uh, and that's why we're remaining at a pretty low confidence for this one. Obviously, that's going to remain the case until probably mid fall, maybe even late fall. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, when do you think our next tropical cyclone will form? And Ethan Golesky said, I think the next tropical cyclone could form in two to three weeks from now. And I think that's a good time frame. We have a lot of dry air and dust out there, but I think that could change pretty soon. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Bambanek, James Wade, Dobie Nagel, Little the Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Lou Falego, Gary's, John Colisi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen Cronenthal. If you would like to be part of this patron end screen of the day and also gain access to very awesome posts like the one we're making today with the snowfall forecast for the upcoming winter, you could do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms One and Cap Bite as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button, leave a comment down below to help that YouTube algorithm out, and also be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.